um, you know, this morning, I, you know, I've been kind of um, meditating quite a bit on, on apostasy and the apostate church and the church of the last days. I think that we are in a situation now to where for a lot of people, there's no getting back. And by that, I mean, there's no getting back to God. Right. I think God has gotten to a point to where, you know, his uh, judgment and his uh, wrath and his justice is applied, you know, uh, pretty rapidly now. I think simply because people have decided that they don't really want to do everything that God has commanded them to do. They just don't want to do some of the things that God mm -hmm. has, has uh, commanded them to do. And when you talk about the apostate church, I'm going to just kind of reason and share some things verbatim because I want to make sure that we get the full understanding of, uh, of, of what, I'm, what I'm saying in regard to apostasy and how it affects people and how it has really taken over the church. Um, because very few churches nowadays, you know, they are not rooted and grounded in the word of God, you know. They have become, you know, places to where they're entertaining. Uh, yes. They are places to where they are, uh, have different, uh, 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 what do you call these things? Games and, and those kinds of things, entertaining stuff. And, um, and they're really are not about the truth. Now, when we look at the Bible and we look at the days, even in the Old Testament, the apostle, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the Old Testament prophets and those who God called to be kings and to be leaders in that day, they only did what they were instructed by God to do. Right. Right. They didn't add anything to what God said. You know, they didn't try to take away nothing. And not only that, they were very adamant about, you know, doing exactly and saying exactly what God told them to do and what God told them to say. You know, when God used those guys back in those days, you know, he would tell them, you go tell these people, you know, and I'm pretty sure a lot of times he going to say, you go tell these clowns and these rebellious uh, children of mine, you know, that if they don't straighten up and fly right, then I'm going to come in and I'm going to wipe out the whole mess of them mm -hmm. and stuff. See, yep. and we think that God, you know, they have been, God has been portrayed. God has been portrayed to be such a loving God, yes, yes. you know, such a wonderful father. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You know, and you still yes. sinning like, oh, get out. But yet, because you have made up in your mind, you know, that God is love, you know, and God doesn't punish sin. Because literally, that's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. He is such a God of love that he is not going to punish my sin. See, mm -hmm. and really, you don't, the people who think that way, they don't believe that they're even sinning. Right. See, right. they think that everything that they're doing is okay yeah. and all of that. And see, and this is the biggest danger that we have in this country today in this church is we have people who think that as long as they say it, as long as they believe it, then that's gospel, that sells yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. You know, in the case in point is in, in our country today, a guy can say, well, hey, I feel like a, a woman today, so I'm going to be a woman. Yeah. And I'm going to change my, ma my name to a female name and stuff. Right. Now, honestly, how stupid and how dumb is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That somebody can just say, I'm this, you know, and I'm that because I say I'm that. See, mm -hmm. I say you're a fool and you're a fool because you say stuff like that. Mm -hmm. See? That's what I say. Yeah. Right. And the thing about it is, is, is that what's even worse than that, you got these other idiots out there, you know, treating these guys, you know, like they're women or something. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> name it a guy, and you know, the woman of the year. Now, yeah. how stupid is that? Yeah. yeah. These people are deranged up oh, yeah. in the head. Right. They are deranged up in the head because that is so stupid. To know that, you know, from the beginning of time, there were only two genders and there are still only two genders. Yeah. See? Yeah. There ain't but two, yeah. but they try to treat these idiots like they're special or something like that. You know, when all they're doing is trying to spit in both eyes of God is what right. they're trying to do. Right. See? But I can promise you and I can assure you, God is going to have the last say so right. about whatever, you know, in the lives of all of these people. Right. Because it still remains 
that you've got to repent of your sin. Right. And if you don't repent of your sin, I don't care what you call yourself. You can call yourself a cockroach if you want to. <laughs> you know, if you die without Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, you're going to hell. Amen. Let's just get that out of the way Amen. right now. You are going to hell. All these transgender people who think that, well, you know, I'm so special and all this, you're going to hell. Because yes. that's what God says. Yes. You are a sexual pervert. Yes. Yes. You are nobody special Amen. to God. Right. You are a pervert in the eyes of God and you're right. an abomination yes. in the eyes of God. Yes. Yes. And obviously you've not read in Genesis where people who call themselves, you know, men, men who were men wanting to be women and women wanting to be men. He burned up the whole lot of them. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes, and to this day, nothing grows in Sodom and Gomorrah, period. Yeah, right, and it's yeah. not going to fill with sulfur. That's right. And you know what does sulfur smell like? It stinks. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, God don't want people to forget what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah right. because of their sinfulness yeah, yeah. and the fact that they wanted to spit in God's face and tell them, you don't tell us what to do. We choose to do what we right. want to do. Yeah, right. we all get to choose what we want to do. But God says you better choose life that right. you might live. Right. Yeah. If you don't choose life, you're going to hell. See, right. Jesus said, if you don't believe in me, he says you are condemned oh, already. Right. Yes. Condemned already because of your unbelief. See? Yes. And none of that has changed. See, And I don't care how they try to convince you in the world that certain things have changed with God, but they haven't. Right. See? He is the same today, yesterday, Amen. and forever. Amen. See, yes. whatever God calls sin in creation, Amen. it is sin today in 2022. Amen. It's sin. See? Right. And the thing is, you better not go and start paying attention to what God is saying. But this is what has happened in the country and in the church for the yeah. most part. Yeah. The church has been turned over to the devil. Yes, yes. It's yes. been turned over to the devil. See, yeah. and the thing is, is that. The people who are following the devil's leading, they will not acknowledge the fact that they are children of the devil. Amen. See, God says, whomever you serve, that's whom you become the servant of. Right. If you are serving sin, you are serving the devil. Right. And Jesus says, if you are serving the devil, he is your father and the lust of your father, you will do. Right. That's what he said. In John chapter 8, he said, look, I do what I see my, see my father do. And you do what you see or you hear your father do. Right. Or see your father do. See? That's what you do. Right. And he said, your father is the devil. And then people who are children of the devil, that Jesus said in that same chapter, he says, you cannot hear me. Right. You cannot understand me. Right. He says, where I'm going, you can't go. Right. And we know that Jesus, you know, when he left here, he went up to heaven yeah. to be with the father. Yeah. And he is telling these guys, because your father's a devil. You cannot go where I'm going. Right. Cannot. Right. Cannot. Right. He wanted to make that explicitly understood. If you are serving the devil, there's no way in the 80s you're going to go to heaven. Right. Because right. that's where he is. He said, you can't go where I'm going. Right. He said, you know, he said, you don't want to. Uh, he said, you don't even know me. Mm -hmm. He said, you don't, you know, he said, if you knew my father. He said, you would know me. Amen. And what are people doing in the apostate church today? They are denying literally everything that God is and that God stands for and that yeah. God has commanded. Right. Right. Because they come up with their own doctrines, their own traditions, yeah. and they've like just kind of like opened the door real wide and got a, 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 a 55 size boot and kicked right. God out. Right. Because they wanted to make sure he don't come back in. Amen. See? Amen. You don't think these people want God up in, they don't want God up in there? No. Because God brings conviction with his presence. Right. See? Right. If the presence of the Holy Spirit is yeah. in these churches, yeah. I can assure you that there will be conviction. Yeah. Right. But you know why there's no conviction? Because the Spirit of God is not in these places. Right. 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 He's not in these places. Right. See? Right. And what, what has happened is, Amen. you know, it's sad to say, but people have gotten fed up with God. Yeah, they got fed up with it. Yeah, you know they said, "Man, we don't. You know, I'm tired of doing all this stuff. You know, I, you know, my 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 my, my body is pulling me this way, and mm -hmm. and the Bible is telling me I need to be going that way or whatever. So, you know, I'm gonna just forget about all of that. You know, I mean, you know, all I'm concerned about is feeling good. Right. 
Yeah. See, if I feel good, then it must be right. See? Right. Come on. Your flesh can make you feel yeah. like you saved. Right. Yeah. Right. Your flesh can give you such butterflies and all of this stuff and you know and, and just make you think that you are so right with God. Mm -hmm. But guess what happens when you close your eyes in death? Right. You find out that you've been you've been doggone been deceived by a bunch of worms. Yes. See? yes. Cause those worms were eating up, you know, your 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 ability to hear what does say the Lord. See, right. you know, wherever you wanted to feel that little itch or that little a uh, 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 smooth feeling or whatever, then the devil would make you feel like that. Right. Why do you think that if you don't want to serve God, that you go to the kind of church that you go to? Right. Because you want to be feeling good and you don't want any conviction and you right. do not want anybody telling you yeah. that you are living in sin. Right. Let me just tell y'all something right now before I go any further. When the apostles went to these churches, and I talked about it a little bit last week, when they went to these churches in Corinth and Rome and Galatia and Philippi and all these other churches, now these were supposed to be the churches that were serving God. Right. Because they had they had began those churches by going and establishing the truth. Right. See? Establishing the truth. You know, lifting up Jesus and right. causing people and teaching people to become disciples of Christ. Right. See? But yeah, they left and they came back a couple of weeks later, man. These folk that doggone went right back to what they were doing. Mm -hmm. right. See? They went back to what they were doing. Why? Because they were not fully surrendered and committed to God. Right. They loved some of those sins that they were committing before they claimed to be saved and they wanted to go back so that they could get those experiences all over again. See, right. Because the fact is, is that if you don't love Jesus and if you are not fully committed to doing the will of God, your flesh eventually will take you over right. again. Right. See? Amen. Again, and why is that? Because you find more pleasure in your sin than trying to live a life of holiness and righteousness as you've been commanded to do by God. That's right. By God. And what, when, uh, what is that really saying? I want to be in control. Right. Because I, I don't want to do what God wants me to do. Right. I want to be in control. Yes. See? And so what do you do? God will let you be in control if that's what you right. want to do. Yes. If you want to be in control, God says, hey, you can be in control. See? Why did he say choose? You have a choice. See? Yeah. You have a choice. And the thing is, is that God explains the consequences of both choices. Right. Right. One choice you get rewarded. The other choice you get condemned. Right. See? Yes. And that's just the bottom line. Right. You get condemned because of the fact that you have rejected the truth of God to have your own way. Right. See? Amen. Then that's what you want to do. See, and the thing about it is, you know, in apostate church, you know, it has nothing to do with righteousness. It has nothing to do with the prophecies of men of righteousness. Right. See? Right. You know, a righteous man is not going to be standing up preaching in an apostate church. Right. And it's not because he don't want to be there because he wants to share the truth. But the problem is they don't want him there. Right. See? You know, why, you know, when people, you know, complain, you know, why would people complain who can't, who, who claim to be saved? Why would they complain and be upset with somebody that sticks strictly to the yeah. truth? And they know that's the way they've been their whole life in terms of when they began ministering the gospel, they stick to the Bible. They don't doggone fool with nothing else. Right. See? Because Jesus said the truth going to set you free. So they stick to the truth. Yeah. Because anything else is going to deceive you and it's going to cause you not to have the relationship with God that you ought to because you're not fully invested in the whole word of God. See, yeah. right. you can't mix something with God's word, your right. own opinion, your assumption, your presumption or any of that crap, you know, and expect that to be the truth. Right. Because the minute that you start putting stuff in there, the real truth left. Amen. The real meaning of God's word Amen. left, you see, Amen. because, you know, in the, in the Garden of Eden, you know, God told Adam and Eve, if you eat of that tree, if you eat of the fruit of that tree, you're going to surely die. Right. What did the devil right. say? You're not going to surely die. Right. That's right. That God, not, you're not going to surely die. See, so there's always going to be a contradiction from the devil when, there, when there's truth involved. Yep. You have preachers, preachers rather, 
who have committed themselves to preaching only the truth of God. Right. See? And they're not deviating from that. And then you got preachers that will deviate from it because of the fact that they like the stuff that the devil was telling them just like he told Adam and Eve and right. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eve. See? See, the thing about the devil, he's going to tell you what you want to hear yeah. and, the, and the root of what, of what he is saying is to get down in your soul and in your heart and take control so that he can direct you and instruct you as to what you're going to believe and how you're going to live and what you're going to say. That's right. 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 He'll teach you how to say them sweet words yeah. like he says. Right. Why do you think churches are full today? Mm -hmm. Because there are preachers standing up in the pulpit yep. that they just left a training class from the devil. Yep. How to have your lips dripping with honey Making it yeah. sound like so true, and people buy into that. See? Right. Amen. He manipulates you. Yeah. See? He manipulates you into thinking the way he wants you to think. Yeah. Right. And why do you think that happens? Because you rejected the true gospel of Jesus when you were commanded by God to give no place to the devil. Right. 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 No place. Right. He tells you he's hanging out there. Yeah. He tells you he comes to steal, yeah. to kill, and to destroy. He tells you that he comes as an angel of light and his ministers, those demon spirits of his, come mm -hmm. as apostles of light through men. Yeah. See? And what he said, but you ain't got time to hear none of that. Mm -hmm. See, because you were raised up in a denominational church. Mm -hmm. And we all, we were only taught, and you were only taught rather, your denominational doctrine, and that's what you believe because that's what's most important in your denomination of churches is how our doctrine, how our denomination does things. See, mm -hmm. <clears throat> how many times you went to a church or something, and you were there, and you were just being who you were in the Lord and stuff, and they said, oh, well, we don't believe like that. Mm. We don't believe like that. I mean, we went to a Baptist church over a year and a half, almost a year and a half, and stuff. There was a lot of things in the Bible that we believe. That's all. No, we don't believe that. See, yeah. wow. it wasn't about what was in the Bible. It was about what their church doctrine was. Yeah. You know, and what their denominational, you know, beliefs were. See, right. and it had nothing to do with the Bible. Right. And see, the thing that's going to happen with those people Ooh. is that. They're going to be condemned. They're going to be damned. Right. It's what's going to happen to them. Amen. And they don't even realize that. See? Yeah. And the yeah. problem is, is that today, today in the church, you've got two different kinds of quote truths. You got the truth of the Bible mm -hmm. and you got the truth that's been deceived by men. Right. You got those two truths. The Bible calls them, in, in Galatians chapter 1, calls them another gospel. Right. It's what, it's what Paul called it. See? Right. Turn over there real quick and let's look at that. Where? Galatians chapter 1. See, I'm already off script. <laughs> <clears throat> See, the thing that, you know, and, and you all have heard me say this a lot, of, a lot here. Uh, in this church, and Ken, you and Mary probably had more than uh, more than more than, than Pat and uh, Greg, <clears throat> you know. But the thing is, is that these people have taken the gospel and they have manipulated it for so long. And, and, and let me just make something clear. And this has been over years and years and years. See, yeah. you know, they it didn't just start this year. They've been grooming people for that. The devil Amen. had for a very long time. Amen. And the, the, the one thing that we can understand as well is, you know, the Bible tells us that there is only one gospel. And we read that in Ephesians chapter four, that there's only one gospel. There's only one Lord, one Savior, one God and Father of all one. Mm -hmm. So we understand in Scripture that there's only one gospel. If there's only one gospel, there's only one truth. Right. And if there's only one right. truth, that's the only thing that we ought to be preaching, and that's the only thing that we ought to be living our lives in reference to. Amen. Right. But yet, over the years, they have incorporated denominations of all kinds. 
Yeah. You got, you got, I think somebody told me one time, they got over 900 different mm-hmm. kinds of denominations and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And now what does that tell you? That over time that people have been very, um, very, not very confused, but they just been very disappointed. Yeah. In the fact that, in the fact that, you know, God says one thing mm-hmm. and men says another thing. Right. See? Yeah. And see, and this is the thing I've said for so long. Whenever you allow a man to get his hands and make individual decisions when it comes to the word of God, you may as well just, you know, just buy you a big old stamp. And when everybody enters the church because of that doctrine, and you just stamp in real big red letters, deception. <laughs> I am a fool for deception. <laughs> See? So that everybody will know the kind of fool that you are. Yeah. See? You won't be a fool if you stick to what right. God has said. Right. Right. If you won't be a fool right. or, or deem a fool right. if you believe the word of God right. as it is written. See? Right. You won't be a fool. Right. But guess what? I mean, you got fools on every corner now. Amen. You can stand up by the, by the street and I can promise you that a whole bunch of fools driving by going that way and that way. Yeah. See? Oh, because they don't believe this Bible. Right, yeah. See, the thing that we've got to understand as believers, if we truly believe in the Word of God, we don't believe by anything but other than what's right. in this Bible. Right. Right. We don't believe any other doctrine. We don't accept any other traditions of man. See, because Jesus said, you want to teach for doctrine the commandments of men. Right. He said, you want to hold on to your traditions. Right. See? He said, that's what you want to do. Yeah. Look, that was two years, 2,000 years ago or more that Jesus said that. And mm-hmm. you don't think it's gotten worse? Because what does the Bible prophesy about the last days? Right. Huh? You forget about that? Mm-hmm. Men will give heed to seducing spirits mm-hmm. and doctors of devils. Yeah. Yeah. See, mm-hmm. that wasn't written in, tw- written in 2022. That was written back in Paul's day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. See, God said that through him back then. Yeah. Jesus said, look, he said, the, the, the apostles, the disciples said, Lord, what would be a sign of your coming? What did Jesus say? Do not be deceived. Beware of false prophets. Beware of false Christ. You know, Peter said that there will be false preachers and false teachers. See, so we have been warned about these kind of people in the pulpit, but yet people are so blind to their own pride and their own rebellion and their own self-righteousness that they totally ignore the word that God has spoken and prophesied concerning the last day. See? Right, right. And so now they don't have an excuse. Right. See? They don't have an excuse. God told you that men were going to be, you know, doing things after their own lust and after their own pleasure. See? Right. But yet people just want, oh, well. No, we in church. Oh, it must be good. It's a church. It's church. Look, let me tell you. The average church you go to today, it ain't got nothing to do with God. Right. It has nothing to do with God. It will teach you. They will tell you a whole bunch of jokes. Yeah. They will doggone get out the doggone smoke machine. <laughs> they're going to turn the lights down real low. Yeah. And they're going to flash all these different colors to make you think that you are in a nightclub and you probably really are in a nightclub <laughs> because they're glorifying that more than they are the Lord. Right. See? And all of that stuff is really t- for entertainment purposes yeah. because they know, the pastors know and the leadership know in these churches that people don't really want to be convicted. They right. want to be happy. Right. They want to be right. feel good when they leave yeah. out. Yeah. So what we're going to do is yeah. we're going to entertain their flesh yeah. and we're going to absolutely and totally abandon the yeah. spirit. Right. See? Amen. That's what they've done. Right. Mm. That's what they've done. They've abandoned the spirit of God. Yeah, right. Because these churches ain't care nothing about God at all nowadays. Right. They don't care. The preachers don't care about people being saved. They don't care about people understanding what the truth really says about being born again and right. about their sin. You know, and then the thing is, is that they think that their church is a safe haven. But what did I just say? When Paul and Peter and John went to these churches that they had set up, 
you know, that they had established and all, they rebuked those churches worse than they did unsaved people. Right. See? Amen. Because the people in the church should have known better, and they knew better because they had heard the truth from the mouth of the apostles. Right. See? And some of them had heard it from the mouth of Jesus. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. And yet they had abandoned all of that. They said, hey, we don't, uh -uh, we don't want that, see? And, 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 and what, uh, and what, uh, what, what uh, uh, Isaiah did, you know, what happened with uh, in Isaiah's day was the people told Isaiah, they say, hey, prophesy lies to us. Don't tell us the truth. Tell us some lies and all of that. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's go over here in chapter 6. Uh, did I say chapter 1 or chapter 6? Chapter 1. I'm sorry, Galatians. You need to turn your pages in yours, Mary. You ain't turned them in a while. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know when I used to try to tease Mary like that, people would think, he is so mean. Hey, why is he so mean to you and all that? See, see, people, you know, it's amazing to me how people think that they know what's going on in your marriage. You know, like they're here every day. You know, and they don't know the relationship that we have. They think that they know it, you know. Right. But uh, but Mary and I know it, so I don't really care what anybody else right. thinks about it anyway. Uh, in, in, in verse 1, Paul, an apostle, and he wanted to make sure that, that y'all knew this. Mm -hmm. Not of man, neither by man, right. but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Amen. So Paul is saying, look, I'm not Baptist, I'm not Methodist, I'm right. not Pentecostal, I'm not this and that or whatever. He says, I'm a man that was sent by God. Yeah. See, right. He wanted everybody to know that. Mm -hmm. See, And once he started opening his mouth, then you realize, oh yeah, he's from God. Yeah. Remember what they said about those apostles? I mean, about Peter and John? You know, and the fishermen and stuff about, you know, how stupid they were and, you know, and then how dirty and filthy they were. But one thing that they could not ignore, they knew that they had been with Jesus. Right. Right. See, this is what happens when your life is fully surrendered to God. Everything about your life becomes controlled by the Spirit of the Lord. Right. See? Right. And the reason that happens is because you surrendered your will to let the Holy Spirit do what Jesus sent him to do, which right. is to lead you, to teach you, and to guide right. you. And God also says in Ezekiel, I put my spirit in you to cause you to, to walk into my statue, walk mm -hmm. in my statue. Right. And to obey my commands and stuff. Right. See, so anybody who claims to be saved. You know, and if they really meant what they said, they're going to be doing exactly that. They're right. going to be about their father's business. Yeah. Right. And they're not going to be ashamed of that either. Right. See, when people start trying to make excuses about, well, you know, that ain't really true. I ain't really leave. read that like that. Yeah, it's hard to read when you like that, when you got blinders on. Yeah. <laughs> See? Right. You know, it's hard to read anything yep. you got blinders on. Right. See? And who do you think those blinders came from? They yeah. came from the devil yeah. because the devil has gotten you to believe in a deceptive lie that Jesus warned you was going to happen. Right. See, right. He told you that there's going to be deception out there. And he says, I'm telling you, I'm warning you right now that you need to make sure that you are that you check yourself daily to see if you're in the faith, to see if you're walking in my word and stuff. He says, because the deceiver, the great deceiver and your chief adversary, the devil. The devil Amen. is going to and fro on the earth, yeah. seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. And one of his greatest tools to devour you, to kill you, deception. to destroy you is deception. Yes. See? Yes. It's deception. deception. See? And so, you know, if you don't remember anything else, you know, you might want to be like one of them people I said a while ago. When you, I can promise you, you know, if, if they were to take, you know, into account what I just said about that stamp on that forehead, a big D right up there with big C D E C E P T O N. It probably fit real nice around your forehead. See, because deception and stuff. Now, if you go to the, if you're one of those people to go to those church, you ain't gonna admit that you've been deceived. Right. Right. You know your pride is gonna doggone wear you out. Say no, 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 no. You don't. You right. ain't been deceived. Right. You haven't been deceived. Right. See, people get that way. You know, and believing that deception. For that same reason, their pride. Right. Nobody, nobody gonna be telling me how to live my life. Right. See, 
Ain't no preacher gonna be hollering and screaming at me and hurt hurt my feelings. You know, telling me, you know, <laughs> that, that I got to live like that or whatever. And see, this is the thing that, that gets me about people, man. You know, it's funny, people that don't want to believe God, when they hear the truth from a preacher, and then you read the scripture to them verbatim, they ain't going to blame God, they're going to blame preacher. See? They're going to blame the preacher. You know? And what they're going to do, because it's always more of them than there are of us, they're going to spread lies. They're going to tell lies. And, you know, and I've heard what, what, they, what, what, what people are being told and stuff. Well, you know, you don't really need to talk so, so, so harsh about, about uh, 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 sin all the time. I'm saying, what, are you a fool or something? Why? <laughs> huh? You know, today, if a pastor is called by God and truly ministers the truth, you better have stamped on your forehead bold to preach right. the gospel. Right. Yeah. You better have it on there, see? Right. Because you're not going to be liked by a whole lot of people. Right. See? You're not going to. Jesus said himself, the Savior, the created, uh, the Savior of the world, rather, and the creator of the universe with the Father, you know, he said, look, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Right. Yeah. And why did they hate Jesus? They didn't hate him because he broke their laws. They didn't hate him because he went out dog on and robbed somebody. They hated him because he told the truth. Right. He right. says, you want to kill me, right. a man who had told you the truth. Right. Yeah. See, yep. you want to kill me. See, so I'm not surprised that I'm not, that I'm not well liked by anybody. Right. I'm not surprised at all. Right. And I'm not even offended by it because right. I don't really care. Yep. <laughs> See, my life got hidden in Jesus Christ in 1980. Right. No man on this planet died for me. Amen. Right. No man on this Amen. planet went to the cross for me. Amen. No man on the planet took, took upon himself all the suffering, the ridicule, Amen. the beating, the reviling, you know, to leave me an example to follow. Yeah. Only Jesus Amen. did that. So yeah. I only care yeah. what he thinks. Yeah. I really don't care what anybody Amen. else thinks. Amen. See, Amen. I don't care about that at all. Amen. See? Yeah. And the thing about it is that we all better get to that point right. Right. to where we don't care about what people think about us right. when we're doing the will of God, right. Right, see, and right. walking right. in the truth and stuff. Right. See, the thing that they don't understand is the reason that you walk in the truth, the reason that you're adamant about the truth, because we understand the only hope you have Amen. is to invest yourself Amen. in the truth by repenting Amen. of your sin and allowing Jesus Christ to be Amen. your Lord and your Savior. Amen. Going to any church is not going to save you. Right. Right. I get sick of people talking about, well, you know, I need to go. You need to get in church and all that. <clears throat> I've never told people you need to get in church. Because churches nowadays, they're not about the, the things of God at all. Right. So why would I tell somebody just to go to church? See, yeah. see that shows you, <clears throat> that shows you the faith and the trust and the deception that people are walking in and that people have believed, you know, by the fact that I go to a building and man, I'm telling you, it's going to change me. Mm -hmm. See? If nobody's even in the building, then you know the preacher ain't even got to be in there. But I just need to go to the church and I'm going to be changed. No, that's a big fat lie. Amen. You believe that right till you die, you're going to hell. Right. Bottom line, see? And see, I know another thing that people don't like that I say a lot. That word hell. Yeah. Do you know that Jesus talked about hell more yes. than he talked about your, your salvation? Yes, he yeah. did. And yet people try to make, make it appear that hell is a bad word. Right. Man, look, you better have your preacher telling you about hell because yeah. it's one thing, you know, to find out about hell now and then have the opportunity to there repent yeah. and allow Jesus to save yeah. you there and you then go. allow him to uh, uh, lead you and teach you and train you as to how to be his disciple as opposed to when you get in hell and then you see, oh, Lord, no, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. See? Yo, you, you didn't like that preacher? Oh, I didn't like that preacher, that Jackson man. I didn't like that preacher. I, I knew he was telling the truth because I saw it in the Bible. But my, my preacher told me I didn't have to believe all of that. There are going to be a lot of people yeah. that wish that they could get their hands around their pastor's throat, yeah. you know, when they get to hell because they lied to him right. the whole time. Absolutely. See, 
When we talk about the body of Christ, we're talking about every born again believer. Right. Right. No matter where they are. Right. That is the body of Christ, see? Right. And you need to believe what the body of Christ is supposed to believe. Every word of God. Amen. See, that's what you better be believing and right. stuff. And you better be checking out them jokers standing up in the pulpit, right. you know, saying that, you know, thus saith the Lord. When you see in their life, their life doesn't even line up with Scripture. Right. But they're going to tell you something and expect you to believe what they're saying. Right. The Bible says, the apostle said, if you're going to preach the gospel, you ought to be living the gospel. Right. See, right. So right. your pastor ought to be a living testimony Amen. before your eyes as to what it's like Amen. to live a life that is fully surrendered to the service of God and to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, you need to make look at them. See, a lot of y'all don't want to look at them because you know that you ain't going to see Jesus in them. Right. See? Right. Because, see, even right now, you suspect about what they're preaching to you. Mm -hmm. See, see, we've gone so far away from the holiness church, from the righteous Christ-driven church, to a church where, you know, it's a uh, seeker friendly. Because mm -hmm. all they want to do is make sure that they seek out what kind of friendly thing that you want going on in the church. What kind of music you want going on in the church. What kind of setting you want going on in the church? What kind of praise music you want going on in the church? See? And see, and once that they get all of that stuff and the people tell them all of that, and that's all they're looking for, not one time do they ask them, do you want to hear the holiness and the truth of God's word, or do you want us to placate your sin? Mm. See? They ain't going to ask them that question. They're only going to ask them those things that are entertaining, you know, games and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, programs that's going to appeal to their flesh. Yeah. See? Anytime you got to go out and you start asking people what they want in the church or whatever, you know, you've already just told the Holy Spirit, we don't need you no more. Amen. We don't, we don't need you to yeah. tell us what needs to go right. into God's house. Yeah. Right. You know, we don't need you to tell us that anymore. Right. See? Because right. we've already figured it out. Mm -hmm. See? And that's what man has decided that he yeah. is a God unto himself. Yes, right. He does not need anything about Jesus. Right. Does not need the word of God or whatever. Because I will come up with the kind of sermons that everybody wants to hear and that everybody can appreciate. Amen. See? That's what they come up with and stuff. Yes, right. Whereas if you're a true believer, you sit in a place like that, you want to throw up in, in, the, in the first five minutes of the service. Right. See? Because they're not going to tell you the truth in the beginning. They're not going to tell you the truth in the middle. And they're not going to tell you the truth in the end. Right. See? Right. Because the whole purpose in that whole message was to make you feel good about yourself yeah. so that you'll come back next Sunday. There you go. See? That's right. See, that, that's why. And then they start building all of these activity buildings and all of these lunch rooms and, you know, and all of this stuff and all appealing to your flesh. See, you go. God showed us what happens to people in scripture that lean on the arm of the flesh. Right. Jeremiah said, if you lean on the arm of the flesh, you're going to be cursed. Right. See, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the children of Israel, they got so rebellious in the wilderness God had to wipe a whole bunch of them out. See? Right. And the thing about it also is the children of Israel spent 40 years yep. in the wilderness. Yep. You know, and why did they spend 40 years in the wilderness? Because they thought they knew better than God. Yep. Right. Yep. Nothing was ever satisfied, satisfactory to them mm -hmm. that God did. Right. See? Yeah. Even though he met every need that they have, right. he gave, he did the same thing to them that he promised to us. I will supply all your need. He promised us that, right. see? He promised them that, and he kept his promises, right. see? The people that broke their promise and broke their commitment were the people who said that God was their father and Jesus was their Lord, right. see? Because they didn't walk in obedience, see? Right. They murmured. They complained right. about right. everything, right. see? Right. They thought that, and then I'm going to tell you, this is what I think happened. I think God was such a God of covenant, meaning that he made covenant with those people and he never broke covenant with them. Right. He told them everything that he was going to do and he did it. Right. See, everything that he was going to do. Mm -hmm. He made sure that they were comfortable going through the desert. 
He said, because the Bible says he was a fire by a night and a cloud by day, right. and a rock that rock that followed him was Jesus, that made sure they had water. Right. See? Yeah. So they had everything. They had their needs. Right. See? Yeah. God never told them, I'm going to give you what you want. There you go. He said, I'll give you what you need. Right. Yes. He promised that, see? And what happened the minute that they got disappointed or dissatisfied with God. Mm -hmm. They started murmuring and complaining. Right. They started cussing God. Mm -hmm. They started pointing and wagging their finger at God or whatever, see? And not only that, then God said, okay, I'm going to open up this old earth. Did y'all want to come over here? Those on God, come on over here, see? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he destroyed the thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Can't remember the exact Dathan and his Dathan and his Dathan. They were murmuring against mm -hmm. God. They were murmuring against uh, 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 uh Moses and Aaron, yeah. see? And I'm going to tell y'all something while I'm thinking about that. If you got a pastor, I'm talking about y'all out there too. If you got a pastor that's preaching the truth and telling you the truth, and even though he, you know, he, he sets your soul on fire sometimes, but you know he's preaching the truth and he loves you with the love of the Lord and stuff like that, you better be careful if you start complaining about it. Right. 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 You better be careful, yes, yes, yes. I'm telling you, because God appointed yes, yes, yes. him. The difference thing, you can tell a man that was called by yes. God and somebody that was. Right. See? A man that's called by God gonna always tell you the whole right. truth. Right. Right. Yeah. He's not going to be concerned about your feelings because Jesus wasn't concerned about right. it. Right. See? He's concerned about your soul and then God has experience in, 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 in showing you how to, how to take care of your soul, how he would rather take care of your soul, and how he will shape you and mold you into his disciple. See, yes. right. God does that. See, right. man ain't going to do that right. for the most part. Right. Right. You have a few of us that'll do it, but yeah. man, preachers for the most they ain't going to be doing that. Right. See, because they're too busy trying to keep everybody else happy. Right. See, and the only person that they should be concerned about pleasing and making happy is God the Father right. and Him alone. See, right. God wants you to be that vessel that He's called you as a pastor to preach and to teach and to train people in all the things of God. Because the fact is, if they don't get the truth, they cannot be set free from their sin and from right. their bondage. Right. And because of the bondages and the sin, they cannot serve God. Right. See? That's why the truth is so important. Right. That's why the truth is so important. It's so that you can fulfill the calling of God that he placed on your life when he called you as his sons and as his daughters. Right. See, That's why the truth is so important. So... Paul says, look, I wasn't called by man. And then he said, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ. See, Paul knew that they got sin going on in this church. Yeah. But he was very gracious when he approached them. And stuff, because it probably had been Jesus, he would have come in there with a whip or something. Yeah. See? <laughs> But I guess Paul had been taught a little bit different. Jesus yeah. taught him a little bit different. Now you be gracious. You don't really have to be like me, but you still gonna drop the hammer. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. You know, God still ain't gonna yeah. lie to you. You're gonna drop the hammer, right. man. Mm -hmm. If you're in sin, you're gonna know it. Right. Because right. he's gonna right. tell you. Right. He's gonna tell you. Verse four. Uh, in verse four he says, Who gave himself, talking about Jesus, for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Then he said, I marvel that you, that ye are so soon removed or turned away into the, uh, from, from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now, Paul says, another gospel or a different gospel, he says, but, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. The devil sent people specifically yep. to that church yep. to pervert the gospel, right. to confuse the people, right. to deceive the people. Right. See, when you get people to believe opposite to the gospel or add to it, which changes it or takes away from it, which right. also changes it, right. it's perverted. Yes. It's no yes. longer holy anymore. Yes. Right. 
Right. It's no longer the holy word of God because you've added doggone filth to it. Mm -hmm. See, yes. you've added filth to it, so it's not going to even work. And the reason that these people thought it was another gospel because once the gospel had been perverted and you believed the perversion that had taken place, you can no longer hear the voice of God. Right. You just left from serving God to serving the devil. Right. Whomever you serve, keep this in mind, that's whom you become the servant of. Right. That's who you become the servant of. See, and everything that is sinful is of the devil and he's the father of it. Amen. Jesus says he was a murderer from the beginning. Yep. He is a liar yep. and the father of it. That's See, right. And when you add to the word, that's a lie. Right. You, you lying. You're calling the word something that it's not. Right. See, it's right. what you're saying. So Paul uh, goes on to say, which is not another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. Verse 8. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Right. Mm -hmm. Let him be accursed. Right. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Now, why would he say that twice? Wow. Two reasons. Number one, you have to establish it. But number two, he wanted to make sure that you understood yes. the consequence yes. of preaching another gospel. Right. Right. Preaching right. another gospel right. was a consequence. Right. And number two, he wanted to make sure that you didn't misunderstand what, understand what he said the first time. Right. See, this is some serious stuff is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, that is tampering. When people fool with the word of God and try to change it or whatever, you are trampling on the blood of Jesus yeah. because he is the word. Right. Yes. You're true. saying the word that Jesus is true. that is written in this scripture yes. is not enough to where you got to go add something to it. Whoa. Or you got to take away from it. Mm -hmm. You know, and God says you are perverting my word and this is the punishment. Curses. Right. So, right. Yes. And right. if God says something, you better take it to the right. bank. Right. You can take it to the bank. Right. See? Because if he said it, it's going to come to pass. And we understand that this is God speaking through Paul, giving him his word inspired by the Holy Spirit to tell what God is saying. Yeah. See? Right. That's what it's all about. And yet you got people who will dispute what he's saying. Oh, he didn't really mean it like that. See? Yes, he did. Yes. Yes, he did. Yeah. We believe the word as written. That's right. Yes. Not as interpreted. Right. Yes. Amen. Because the Bible is right. not subject, according to Peter, to any man's private right. interpretation. Right. You better be believing it as written, and I better be preaching it as written. Right. See, as written. They perverted the gospel of God on purpose. Yes. On purpose. Because what did he say in the very beginning? They come for that very reason. Mm -hmm. They come for that very reason is to pervert the gospel. Right. Amen. It's what Peter said. Amen. So verse, uh, verse 10, 11. Mm -hmm. Verse 10, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He says, for do I now persuade men or God? Oh. Mm -hmm. And why would he ask that question? Mm -hmm. Because of the crap that he just right. experienced and witnessed right. that a pervert has gotten into the church and doggone perverted the gospel. Right. Mm -hmm. See? So he says, for do I now persuade men or God? Talking to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of God. Now everybody yeah. Yeah. pay right. attention to that. Right. Yeah. If you out there pleasing a man, right. You don't belong to God. Right. Amen. You are not a child right. of God. Right. You can't right. even serve God. And now y'all know we got a lot of folk running out here talking about serving God and stuff. And they don't even have a relationship with it. Right. Because they believe a perverted gospel right. that's caused them to be deceived by lies and stuff that have been told to them by men sent by the devil. Right. See? Because what does it say in 2 Corinthians? He says that there are men in the church who are who are of the devil who have been sent as angels of light. Right. Yeah. He said there are ministers in the church 
that have been sent by the devil that are apostles of life. Right. See? Mm -hmm. They're the ones who go in and say what should happen in the church yeah. mm. and stuff. And so why do you think that Paul made sure, I want to make sure you boys get what I'm saying. See, mm -hmm. you need to understand what I'm saying. You going around here representing God and telling lies in, re in reference to his word. You're telling people that they are, don't have to be afraid to go to hell because God don't send anybody to hell. Oh, wow. You're telling people that, well, no, you don't have to really repent. All you got to do is shake your hand and go dive into a bucket of water and stick your head in there and go underneath and you're going to be saved and stuff. See, see, they don't go. See, honestly, what I just said, all of this stuff. Is tampering with the holy word of God yes. and they don't really realize what they're doing. See, right. they've opened up more than a can of worms, see, because God doesn't take it lightly. Right. Because, see, the other one thing that you need to understand is two things, rather. We know that the word of God is true. Right. Amen. See, right. so if you want anything to happen mm -hmm. in your life that is pleasing to God, it's not going to have to come by way of the truth. Taught and led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, secondly of all, you, you, you're not going to put in Jesus to open shame, yeah. you know, and perverting his name. Yeah. Why? Because he is the word Amen. of God. Right. See, what does the Bible say? What did Jesus say? You know, I am the word of God. Yeah. I am the truth of God. I am the light of God. See? Right. And you have taken all of those things that are very, 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 mm -hmm. very important in the life of a believer, and you thought going trampling on them and got hobnail boots stepping on them as if it's nothing. Right. See? Amen. See, this is why we got apostate churches. Right. Amen. Because they've taken something holy and called it holy, but they have tried to make it common and mm -hmm. unclean. Is what they've done. Mm -hmm. See? God ain't taking that lightly. Right. See? Amen. A lot of people walking around here thinking because they feel good about what they think about themselves and about their walk with God, you know, that, ooh, I just know I'm going to make it into heaven or whatever. Man, the devil has such control over societies yes. all over the world now like you would never, ever believe. Amen. He has a stranglehold on this country right, right now yes, because he's sitting in the White House. Right. Yes, he does. See? Yes, he does. The devil is sitting in the White House and everybody underneath him or his, or his demon imps and stuff that are going about causing havoc, creating and destroying people's lives, you know, without any kind of reservation. Right. Don't care about people dying. Right. Don't care about destruction. Right. Don't care about, about, uh, about the lives of people being destroyed. Right. Because that's part of his M.O. Right. To kill, to steal, and, and to destroy. destroy. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening in our country right, right now. Yeah. See, yeah. the devil is in charge, I'm telling you. Right. He is. I've always looked at the situation and the circumstances that's taking place in the world as a whole as spiritual. Right. See? Because the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, for the for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Right. See? Happen. Most folk in church don't know nothing about doing spiritual warfare. Right. They don't know yes. that you've got to rebuke and bind yes. and cast out the devil. Yes. They don't know anything about that. Yes. They don't even know that. Why would Jesus find it necessary to give you power in Luke 10, 19 to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy? Amen. See? Amen. Why would you think he would deem that necessary? Right. right. Yep. Because he knew that the devil goes to and fro yeah. on the earth, seeking whom he may devour. Right. Right. See? And the people that he's going to destroy and devour are weak need Christians, yeah. or believers, and unbelievers, and people who have backslidden right. and who are who are <clears throat> who are lukewarm, who don't really have a relationship with God. Yeah. Right. And that's why it's so important that those of us who truly believe in the word of God. We must bind and loose those things in the spiritual realm 
in order to keep the devil at bay. Yeah. The reason that we ain't got the doggone control in the spiritual realm as we should have as believers is because people are being destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Amen. Amen. You know when you sit in a church, Amen. in an apostate church where they have walked away from the truth, do you understand that there is nothing in those churches that can equip you to do warfare with the devil and with the enemy? Right. They can't give you nothing. Right. They make your flesh feel good, right. but I'm telling you, I can promise you the majority of those people, their lives doing weekly on a daily right. basis, they catch hell. Right. They catch right. hell because they can call on the Lord, but he ain't answering. Right. See? Right. The right. God said, look, he said, when people walk away from me like King Saul did, when he was rebellious and prideful and arrogant, God says, look, he can pray all he wants to. He told Samuel, he said, don't you even pray for him because I'm not hearing you when you pray for him. Right. See? And he said, I'm not hearing Saul when he prays. Right. Right. He says, I'm not hearing. Those people in Jeremiah, when they continually rebelled against God and they rejected the truth of God and they rejected the word of God sent by God through Jeremiah, God said, you tell them, you know, that don't pray because I am not going to hear them. Right. He says they are leaning on the arm of the flesh. Yes. And he says, whoever leans on the arm of the flesh, they as well have a curse on them. Yes. They are cursed and I'm not hearing them. Right. That's what God told them. Right. See? He said, those idols, those Baal idols and the things that you've been worshiping and those other gods that you've been worshiping, he said, when you got a problem, he said, don't call on me. You go call on them. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's what God says. Right. So God tells a lot of these people sitting up in these churches, don't call me. Right. I'm not answering you. Yeah. Yeah. He says, you know, you serving the preacher, you kissing his shoes, you licking his boots. He says, so you go call on him. You tell him to deliver you. Yeah. You tell him to supply your needs and stuff. Mm. Because God says, I've wiped my hands of you all because of your rebellion and your self-righteousness and your, your high imaginations that are all evil. He said, I ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah. You can't yeah. call yourself a child of God if you're walking in, in any way like that Amen. whatsoever. Amen. Right. You are not a child of God right. because God said it. See? And then not only that, you know, with King Saul, you know what happened with him? Because of the fact that he just said, he just literally told God, look, I'm tired of listening to you. I got my own plan. I got my own way of doing things. The people love me and all of this stuff. So, you know, I'm going to please them. See? Yeah. And that's what he did. Yeah, he did. Remember, he got in trouble the very first, I mean, not long after he was a king. Right. Because what did the people tell him? We want us a king. Yeah. yeah. We want us a king is what they told Samuel. They said, we want us a king because we want to be like all the other nations. See? Yeah. All the other nations were sinful. Yeah. All the yeah. other nations had nothing to do with God. Right. And what yeah. they were saying was, you know, we want to go back to the way we felt when we were in Egypt. Mm. See? With that sinful nature. We want that nature to manifest in us, which it has, but we want to walk in that now. So wow. we are not going to be serving God and we want us a king because we want to be like everybody else. See? Wow. So the thing is, God says, okay, you know, and Samuel was ticked off, see? But, you know, God just said, hey, man, slow your roll. He said, look, give them what they want. Yeah. He said, look, I'm, you know, I mean, I, I gave y'all a choice. I gave them a choice. If they want to serve the devil and do they want to go to hell, he said, hey, go ahead. You just yeah. let them do whatever they want to do. Right. He said, but I'm going to tell you something. And see, and this is how, in my mind, God goes beyond himself. He told them, he said, Samuel, he said, look, I want you to go back and I want you to tell them, you know, the manner of this king, what this mm -hmm. guy is going to be like. He said, I don't want to tell you what, what it's going to be like. He said, let them know that this guy is going to be a nightmare for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically what he said, because he's going to take all the stuff that you and your people have. Mm He's going to take it away from them, going to give it to his people, and you're going to end up being the slaves and his concubines. Mm -hmm. right. See? That's what he said. Mm -hmm. See? And you know what those fools said when he told them? We don't, we don't care. care. Give us a king. We don't care. We still want us a king. <laughs> See? We want to be like everybody else. So God said, okay, you can have that. See? Yeah. Yeah, he did. And so what happened was God removed himself. Yes, he mm -hmm. did. Because you want to choose somebody else other than God, then go ahead. Yeah. Now, these people 
had history. Their ancestors had history of provisions that God made for them. Right. Not one of their ancestors could ever say that God reneged on a promise. Right. Not right. one of them. They could ever say they did. Because right. he never did. You know. But yet, this is when people start, the expression I use when they start smelling themselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in other words, thinking that, ooh, I got this under control now. You know, yeah. you know, I don't really need to read my Bible as much. I don't really need to pray as much and all mm -hmm. this. And so they start minimizing the things that they really ought to be maximizing, you know, regardless of the condition of their life. Yeah. When you or everything is going good in your life, trust me, you better start praying right. real hard. Yes. Right. You know, you better start lifting up Jesus and mm. you better start calling on the Lord and you better start, mm. you know, confessing and believing those promises that God offered you. See, right. see, God don't give you those promises. He offered them to you mm -hmm. because you still have to choose whether you want the gift or whether you don't want the gift. Because right. he's not going to force it on you and stuff. You know, he says, I will put my spirit in you. But Jesus said, that ain't going to even happen if you don't believe. Right. The Bible right. says God put his spirit in people that believe. Right. See? And that's why a lot of people running around here talking about they got the Holy Spirit in them and he ain't in there. Right. right. Because they've never, ever believed. See? It's important as a person of God, <laughs> as a child of God, to believe. Amen. Jesus said you have not because you ask not. And really it's because you don't believe when you ask. Right. Jesus said, when you pray mm -hmm. for anything, right. he said, the most important thing is, not just the praying, but the most important thing is believe. Yeah. Believe yeah. when you pray. Yeah. How many times when people got healed or delivered, Jesus said, because of your faith, be it unto you. Right. Right. You know, if you believe, be it unto you. Right. See. It was all in the hands of the individual and not so much in Jesus. The healing and the deliverance was already out there. Right. All you had to do was believe it. See? But it's hard to believe the scriptures when you don't even walk in the scriptures. Right. When you don't even read the scriptures. When you don't even study the scriptures. See? See, the thing that has happened in the church is the, 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 uh, uh, the importance of faith and the importance of surrender your whole life to God and the importance of holiness, it left the church 20, 30 years ago. Right. See, the church as a whole don't believe in that. Right. You know, you can't even get people in these churches to preach on sin anymore. Right. And as I said a while ago, the thing that I'm, that I'm reading about right now is the people that knew the truth because they were taught the truth. Mm -hmm. Now they went back and started believing lies. Right. And not only that, welcoming in People that were that were sent there to absolutely and totally pervert the gospel right. of Jesus Christ. Right. What does the scripture say when the soul is sold to the word? The Bible says when the word is sown in the lives of some people, what happens? The thief, the devil comes what immediately yes. to steal yes. that word. Right. Why? Because that person is in the very birthing stages yes. of their salvation. Right. Right. And the devil knows that they ain't got a whole lot of the word rooted in them yet, see? Yeah, yeah. So he comes in and he brings a word or something that sounds very close to the truth. And he's twisted it enough to where he manipulates, you know, the feelings that they that he was able to manipulate while they were in the world. See, right, right. so the devil is going to attack those young believers, yeah. you know, early on. And he's going to attack those areas that they were vulnerable in while they were not saved. Amen. See? And that's Amen. why people have to be discipled and taught the truth of God's word. Amen. See? So that they can they can believe that word and they develop a hunger for that word. And God is able to reveal himself to them by the spirit because of the word that they have read and heard and been taught that I can live like this. Amen. But I have to trust in the Holy Spirit. Right. See? Right. And that's what has to happen. But see, the devil knows, man. You know, I was sharing this with somebody last week. I can't remember who it was. But see, this is the thing that the devil knows. When you are, the moment that you are delivered out of the womb, you are a sinner. Mm -hmm. The moment you come out, you are a sinner. 
See? So don't you think the devil knows that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the devil starts early on, start working on you. You know, getting you little things that you like to do, you know, but then the whole manipulation process is to get you to like your sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. those things that are sinful, you know, and he works and he starts out with stuff that don't really look sinful. See, but that is not sinful in the mind of a lot of people. And those are the things that he uses. See, right. and once he's gotten you to buy into the sinful nature and the sinful life, then he starts putting other stuff more evil in your sight in order for you to make choices of, uh, right. for it. See? Right. See, like in our society, for instance, you know, society says drinking is legal. Yeah. So you can go to a bar and you can have your few drinks or whatever, but the devil say, hey, have a few more. Mm -hmm. Have a few more. Have a few more. And he knows he, if he's dealing with an arrogant, prideful guy, He's going to try to drive home on his own. Yeah. He ain't going to want nobody to drive him home. Next day, you know, you know, front page news, son of the mayor killed in a drunken accident. See, mm -hmm. see, that's how the devil gets you. He will take something that is legally, that is legal and innocent, and he'll pervert it to a degree right. so that you can sin. And his ultimate goal is to kill you. Yep. Right. Yep. I mean, really, that's yep. his ultimate goal is to kill yeah. you. He wants to destroy your whole life, mm -hmm. and if he can take you out, oh man, that's that's nine hundred mm -hmm. feathers in his quill, see, and, and, and that's just what he what he wants to do this stuff, and that's why you know he sends people to these. Now these churches have been established very long, mm -hmm. you know they haven't been established very long, so there he goes in there, and I mean, and when you see it, I mean, the apostles went back and forth into a lot of these churches. Especially in Corinth, I think they made three trips there. Cause in Corinth, the third time you know, I mean, they they yeah. just they just didn't get it. Mm -hmm. They were full of sin, mm -hmm. yeah. sexual perversion, adultery, fornication. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, they just had a good old time going on up in there. Yeah. You know, everybody got a good feeling every once in a while. See, <laughs> you know, sleeping with your friend's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You know. And, 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 and your friend sleeping mm. with your wife mm. and your wife is sleeping with somebody else's husband mm. see we don't want to admit all this stuff but this stuff goes on yeah. it is normal yeah. in churches because wow. it's hard to resist temptation yeah. and sin when the spirit of God is not there to convict right. anybody right. Yeah. It's, right. hard. That's true. it's hard it's hard you can't resist sin without the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's one thing, you know, to feel bad about something that you do as opposed to knowing that it's sinful and it's a conviction as opposed to feeling bad. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. See, if you're convicted, you know that it came from God. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know that it came from God. When you feel mm -hmm. bad, you know, oh, I just, uh-uh. See? Yeah, and man. you ain't going to do nothing about that. Mm -mm. But wow. when you know you're convicted, you're going to try to do something about it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what you're going to try to do. Okay, verse... Uh, in verse 11, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. And I love what he says here. I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation. Amen. The revelation yeah. of Jesus Christ. Amen. See? Amen. It was revealed to him by Jesus right. that this is the gospel that you preach and not this mess out here, see? Mm -hmm. And he made sure that he identified where it came from, see? So that nobody would be confused. You see, this is the thing about the apostles that I love as well, you know, that they pattern themselves after uh, uh, following Jesus. They didn't leave you with a question mark in your head about what God said. Right, amen. They told you what he said. Yeah. And see, this is the thing, People don't want to accept and believe it that way. They would much rather manipulate the truth because the absolute holy truth of God is not going to fit in these apostate churches. Mm -hmm. It's not going to fit because it's the truth. And they don't want the truth. For you have heard of my conversation in verse 13 in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. See, 
and profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceeding zealous of the traditions of my father. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Paul was in error, and he didn't know it. He thought he was doing what was right. Right. And he thought that the tradition that he had learned from the Pharisees and his fathers and stuff, that that was what he was supposed to be doing because it was the traditions that they'd come up with. Right. Mm -hmm. So he said, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. You don't think God called Paul before? He actually came to him. Oh yeah, amen. Because there was a time and a season, you know, in Paul's life that God wanted certain things to take place in order that he may be able to use it the way that he did. Amen. And I think what it reveals is that no matter how evil or how mean or how sinful a person is, if they will surrender to God and trust in God and believe God, their whole life can yeah. and will turn around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And this yeah. is God's example, yeah. you know, is the Apostle Paul was one of the most feared men mm -hmm. as Paul, uh, as Saul rather. And yet this dude became one of the most fire breathing representatives of the gospel in the whole Bible, really. Right. Yep. You know, who love the truth more than anything. Yep. yep. Because, see, and this is the thing when when you have been like, like you know, lived as he lived prior to him, you know, getting saved. In the beginning, he was trying to do God's will and didn't know it. He thought he was doing it rather. But now that he knows the truth and the truth was revealed to him, not just by hearing his experience on the road to Damascus, mm -hmm. you know, and God blinded right. him, yep. you know, and the Holy Spirit came upon him mm -hmm. because he didn't go in him until he went to Ananias' house and got filled with the Holy right. Spirit. See, and there's one thing that you should learn about being filled with the Holy Spirit if you're going to be able to accomplish the things that God wants you to accomplish mm -hmm. in your life for his praise and for his glory, you're going to have to be filled with the Holy right. Spirit. Amen. Every person Amen. that had a, that was a, 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 a staunch or, or a forceful witness and testimony and an example for Jesus, they all filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. You know, the mother Amen. of Jesus, her cousin Elizabeth, Zacharias was. Right. Jesus was, John the Baptist was. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, see? And that ought to tell you something, you know, right there, the importance of it. Because, you know, John the Baptist said, when Jesus will fill you with the Holy Spirit Amen. and with fire, right. see? And with fire. We don't have any church mouth believers. Preach. We got people Amen. that are bold, man. How in the world can you be quiet when you got a fire right. burning in your belly, right. man? Amen. That's true. How can you do that? Mm -hmm. See? And how can you be that mm -hmm. way when, you know, you have received power yeah, from Amen. God on high? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you walk around. <laughs> and they look at me and say, you know him? No, I don't know him. Yeah. Mm -mm. See? I don't know. And see, and, and, and see people got to stop being uh, ashamed of the gospel right of Christ right. all because somebody don't agree with you. Right. Amen. Yep. The one thing that you have in your favor mm -hmm. is you have the truth. Amen. Amen. You have Jesus. You yeah. have the Holy Spirit. You've got the word of God. You've got proof. And just preach the proof, the, the truth, rather, rather, and share the truth and stuff. Don't throw your opinion in there. Right. Don't throw your presumption right. or your assumption in there. Just tell it like it is. Amen. See? Right. They still ain't going to like it, and they still ain't going to like you. But you got to obey God. As Paul said, it's better to obey God than obey man. Right. Right. See? Right. And you got to make a choice in that regard as well. He yeah. says, if you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church 
of God and wasted it and profited the Jews religion above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. Verse 15, but when it pleased God, those who separated me rather from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in, in me, me. Right. in me, mm -hmm. yep. that I might preach him among the heathen immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. That's the best See? thing he could have Amen. Done. See, the thing Paul understood right off the bat was yes. it wasn't about me getting my direction from flesh and blood, not even from Paul, I mean from Peter and John, any of those guys. Because what did he say? He put Jesus in it. Mm -hmm. See, that's what he said. To reveal his son mm -hmm. in me by the spirit. He right. revealed the son in me, in yeah. him rather, yeah. by the spirit and stuff. And so he says, I didn't have no use for flesh and blood. Because Paul knew and realized at that moment that if he was going to be able to do those things that God just now saved him to do, he can't confer with flesh and blood. Right. He goes straight to the Father right. through Jesus, his intercessor. Right. See? That's what he does. See? He said, I can, see, this is the problem with a lot of people in church. They want to know what anybody thinks that they think is somebody. Well, what do you think about this? Right. Well, what do you think right. about this? See? That's why, you know, again, I say, I don't go to YouTube to find out nothing as far as a guy telling me, you know, something that I want to know. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to God. Yep. We got to understand why we have the Holy Spirit. Right. right. If the Bible says the Holy Spirit, I think it's in uh, John 16, 13, that he will lead you, teach you, and guide you into all truth. Right. And God has said, all you need to know is the truth. Mm -hmm. And not just the truth in this regard, but how this truth will expose you to the truth of, of, of something out there, whether it's good or bad. Right. Yeah. See, this truth will expose the truth about that out there. Right. See, right. it will expose the truth about what's sin and what's of God is out there. Right. The Spirit of God, because of the Word of God, will show you who is of God and who's not of God. Right. See? Amen. But you got to be willing to hear what he's got to say. Right. Amen. Because most people are not going to give up their friends and their family for mm -hmm. Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to do it. Right. Even though Jesus said you can love nobody more than me. Mm -hmm. He said you got to hate your mama, your brother, your sisters, and all of them clowns. You got to hate them. He right. said you can't love them more than you love me. Right. See, God wants all of us, not just part of us, mm -hmm. but some of us. He either has all or nothing. Right. See, yeah. right. you know, and, and, and really it's, it's not his loss. It's our loss. Yeah. Because what you're going to find is you're going to find yourself sitting in the doggone uh, same place where the devil and his angels are. Mm. All because you didn't want to believe what God said. A lot of people who call themselves saved, they've gotten comfortable on this earth. That's right. They've gotten yes. very, very comfortable yes. on this earth. Right. Yeah. They don't even think about whether what they're doing is accepted by God or not. If they feel like doing it, they're going to do it. Yes. See? Yes. And that's just the way that they are. They're self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. You know, in the things that they want to do and the things that they like. And the devil has pounded them with so much half-truths and deceptions and stuff that it makes them feel okay because, well, I may feel a little bit bad, but I don't feel too bad about it and all of that. See, mm -hmm. if, you're in the, if you're in sin as a believer and you get convicted by the Holy Spirit, there ain't no such thing. I really don't feel too bad. I guess, no, no, no. You're going to know. Yeah. 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 That you're going to need to repent, Jack. Right. Yeah. And then if you don't repent and you hold on to that sin, it's only going to make your life worse and make it harder to get back to repentance. Right. See? Yeah. If you stay in the comfort zone of sin for so long, I mean, look at your own life. Why did it take you so long to get saved? Mm -hmm. Come on. Why did it take you so long to get saved? Because, man, you enjoyed your sin. Yeah. Right. I enjoyed yeah. being a sinner when I was a sinner. Because I didn't know nothing else. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that there was a truth out there that could really, really, you know, save my soul and make me feel good about my relationship with Jesus and only want to please him. Right. See? Right. I knew I knew that. I didn't know that. See, 
So all that I knew was to sin and I enjoyed it. Right. Paul said he was zealous for the traditions of his fathers. See? We were zealous for sin, you know, and maybe you don't want to admit it, but we were. Yeah. Amen. We were zealous for sin, look forward to committing every day. Right. Now, all of them we really right. didn't commit, didn't like committing because some of them made us feel bad mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, or caused bad relationships with certain people and all. But yet and still, that didn't stop us from doing it. Right. See, you did it because you were familiar with it. Mm -hmm. You were born with it and you grew up with it right. and stuff. And until the light came in, and expose your heinous life of sinfulness and serving the devil was shown to you, then you realize, oh man, I got to do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You knew it wasn't the right way anymore. Right. right. Amen. Because just as God revealed uh, Jesus in, 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 in Paul, he did the same thing to us. Right. He revealed Jesus yeah. in us. See, when he came to us to save us, see, and we accept it. Some people say they accept it, but they honor God with their lips, but Jesus mm -hmm. said, but your heart is far from right. me. Amen. Right. You can't have a heart for the devil and still call yourself a son of God right. or a child of God. That's right. The apostate church fails to warn the sinner to flee from the wrath to come, and it's run on manpower and methodologies rather than God and the Holy Ghost power. See? Mm. Yes. They come up with their own plans, man. Yeah. Jeremiah said that they are men who walk in the imagination of their own evil heart. Mm -hmm. In other words, they come up with what's going to take place in the church. Mm -hmm. They don't seek God. They don't seek the Holy Spirit, you know, as to what they're going to do in church. And I guarantee you, when they have those board meetings, I guarantee you that in the majority of them, they never pray for guidance by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They never pray for God. What do you want us to do in this church? You know, what would you have us to do, Father, in order to cause people, you know, to serve you, to draw closer to you, and to seek you and stuff? They ain't having no meeting about, when they have a meeting, it's about, uh, 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 you know, well, we, we need to build another building now. I mean, uh, you know, that one place that we had where we were having dinners and all of that, it's gotten too small, so we need to build a bigger one. Yeah. We need to build a bigger activity building for the kids now because yeah. we got more kids coming. See, the whole thing about the church of God and we being that church is about total surrender and commitment to the things of God. Right. That's all. I mean, that's it. Seeking first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. See? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Walking in the light as Jesus is in the light. Right. See? That's those are the things that we ought to be thinking about and we ought to be living but yet we're more concerned about what's going on out there in the world and all of this stuff, you know. I keep up with what goes on out there, but man, I'm not invested in it, right. see? Because my faith ought to be in God and I should allow nothing that's going on in this earth to distract me from doing that, see? Right. From serving to God and doing Lord's will. God never told us to be concerned about all of this stuff. Right. If we had been listening to him by the Holy Spirit, he would have already told us, I told you this stuff was gonna happen. Yeah. When sinners are in charge, this is what happens. Yes. See, yes. when you got sinners in charge of something, why in the world are they going to be telling you you need to serve God right. or doing things to enrich your life as a believer? They ain't going to be doing that. If anything, they're going to be trying to turn you away from God more than anything. Right. They're going to try to make you accept sin as normal and sin as something that is accepted. They right. want you to believe that a lie is the truth yeah. and that a truth is a lie. Amen. See, that's what the Bible even says that. Yes, yes. Calling the truth a lie and calling the lie the truth. See, the, um, the apostate church wants nothing to do with the visions uh, or prophecies of men of righteousness. They want no message that disturbs, no upsetting of their successful world. They refuse any kind of correction Everything excused under the banner of love. Yeah. They clamor for entertainment. They flock by the thousands to concerts, plays, and social gatherings. Mm -hmm. They ridicule the prophets of God. They mock what they call the doomsday preachers. Right. I guess I qualify. Yeah. <laughs> they, they live with illusions. They don't want a preacher or evangelist to tell them the hard truth, to bring forth the sword of the Lord. 
They say, preach to us smooth things, bless us, make us happy, make us feel good. Right. See, that's what the apostate church wants. Yep. That's the church that we have, the church building and gathering places of people. That's what we have now. Yeah, sure. They don't want anybody telling them anything that's going to upset their apple cart, mm -hmm. that's going to cause, cause them to feel uh, or have negative feelings. They want to be positive. Right. They want to be, you know, and they and they teach that stuff in the church now. Positive yeah. thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, you think on just think on the good stuff. Don't let them think about the bad stuff. See, they want you to think on good stuff because they don't want you acknowledging your sin. Right. See? And the more that you do not acknowledge your sin and deal with it according to scripture, your sin is going to become who you are. Mm -hmm. A sinful person right. is what you're going to become. It's amazing that people will go back to the stuff that treated them so bad when they were sinful in the world and of the world. See, they're going right. It's like the children of Israel. When they complain to God about not doing this and not doing that and, 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 and why haven't you done this and why haven't you done that? They forget about how bad it was in Egypt. Right. You go out there trying to make them doggone brick. And having to stomp around in the mud for days and for hours and stuff mm -hmm. to make brick. And if they don't give you enough straw, then they tell you, well, you're still going to make your quota and all of that. See, you know, and the devil had the doggone uh, a whip standing over you, yeah. making sure that you did his bidding and stuff. Right. He never, ever let up on you. He always pushed you to become a sinner and someone who hated God and who hated the right. people of God and who hated the word of God. Right. See? Right. He wants you hating the God, hating the word altogether. Because you know the moment that you get that taste of the truth, that taste of Jesus, that taste of, to, to realize that I don't have to live like that, see? Because a lot of people look at friends that they used to have yeah. mm -hmm. that were just like them and they say, oh man, I can't believe you know, it ain't nothing like he used to be anymore. See? And yeah. I, I think about that. I think about Donnie for some reason. You know, that you're not like that anymore. Right. Yeah. And they know it, but they don't want to accept it. Right. Because they've been taught by the devil. You got these folks, then doggone crazy Christians or whatever. What did I say a while ago about the preacher? You got one of them doomsday preachers. That's one of them doomsday believers or whatever, see? You don't want to have nothing to do with them, see? And people in church would say that about you. Yeah. True. They would yeah. say that about you true. because you're one of them doomsday guys yeah. all because you tell them what the Bible says yeah. about going to hell. Yeah. See, yeah. you tell them what the Bible says about murdering babies. You're yeah. still going to hell if you do that. Absolutely. See? And they get mad at you when you tell them there ain't but two genders. That's right. Male and female. That's it. There ain't no such thing as no transgender right. at all. Amen. Stuff. But you ain't going to hear that in church, see, because right. they are doggone uh, 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 ordaining homosexuals in yeah. some of these churches now. Yeah. See? So you, I mean, you better not come up in there with the truth, man, and stuff. You know, and they talking about, you know, how special women are now and all of this stuff. Ain't no woman special to God. You're not special. See, right. mm -hmm. there are three three groups of people. They talk about being special. I'm gonna probably close on this, and I'll pick some of it up maybe next week if God wants to. There are three 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 groups of people that are trying to make you think and accept as special. Number one is women. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make you think that for some reason, out the clear blue, a woman is not equal to a man or whatever, and a woman is not this and a woman is not that. Look, God does not demean women, period, right. in his word. Right. The thing is that they don't want to be what God called them to be right. or created them to be. Right. That's the problem. Right. They don't want what God... Right. Now, they'll go out there in the world, but you know what the Bible says? Yeah. If you were the world, the world would love you, see? Right. So the world loves you, see? Because you buy into that crap that the world says, sure. oh, you've been so mistreated. Oh, you, you, you're, you're a woman and you're a specialist and you need to be treated like a man and all this. God didn't create a woman to be treated like a man. Right. Amen. He didn't create a man to be treated like a woman. Right. Amen. And above all of that, he didn't call a doggone woman to try to call herself and be a man. Amen. And vice versa. Right. That is so stupid because there's no way a woman can be a man and a man can be a woman. And even more so than that, you are not special with God. Amen. You die a sinner. I don't care if you call yourself transgender, tree gender, 
uh, uh, Pluto gender or whatever you want to call yourself and all of that. The one thing that's important to God about your life is whether you repent of your sin right. and whether you give your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yeah. See? Yeah. Because there ain't going to be no transgender in hell. There's going to only be sinners in hell. Right. There is not a pocket in, in heaven over there for the transgender po population right. or the homosexual population. Right. No, ain't no place in heaven like that for y'all. Yeah. There's a big place in hell for a whole bunch yeah. of them. See, yeah. Sinners are going to go to hell. Homosexuality is a yeah. sin. Transgenderism is a sin, not a doggone, uh, uh, not a gender. See, all of this stuff is man created. I said it earlier. When man gets his hands in crap and he has a sinful nature and God has given over, given them over to a strong delusion, this is the kind of crap they come amen, up with. Amen. All I got to do is say I'm a cockroach and I'm a cockroach. <laughs> Some folks, they don't have to say it. I'll be glad to tell him. <laughs> See? Because that's stupid. Cockroach got more sense than that. Mm -hmm. A cockroach ain't running around here talking about I want to be a bumblebee. <laughs> you ain't doing that. You ever heard a cockroach say that, Ken? I want to be a bumblebee? <laughs> that's just about how crazy this stuff is. Right. See? It's like me having like, like a pet dog or something. And he comes in one day and he starts barking, talking about, I want to be a cat. <laughs> you want to be a cat, see? That's just how stupid this stuff yeah. is. Yeah, it is. Right. It exactly is. Yeah. You got folks treating kids like, you know how you play these little games and stuff where you do these little plays in school when you're, when you're, when you're in elementary school, you know, you might play the role of the cat or you might play the role of a dog or whatever. But these folks have got serious about this stuff. Yeah. Now kids think that they're cats. Yeah. See? So now we got to put cat litter in the bathroom. Oh, there ain't nobody would be making my kid look stupid like that. Yeah. And be a, these people have absolutely lost their mind. Absolutely. They lost their mind. And a lot of these folks in churches go along with this stuff. Yes, they do. Talking about they say they're about as big a fool as these people are. They big a fool because they're supposed to know the truth. Bingo. See? Amen. True. And then you got these doggone folks, uh, what did I say, running around, the, uh, the women and the transgender. And then you got these other, this other group of people running around here thinking because they're black that they got this doggone special. They get treated special because they're black. Mm -hmm. There ain't nobody in doggone in the world. I don't care if you're pink, yellow, green, orange. To God, it don't matter. See, right. you're not going to escape hell being a sinner because you think being black gives you some advantage. See, you don't have any advantage being black, none whatsoever, as far as God is concerned. Right. And if some of these people, these stupid people around here, weren't afraid to tell you the truth, they'd tell you the same thing. Right. Right. See, mm -hmm. but you run around, oh, well, you know, we black, so we get special treatment. No, you don't. Come up in here and see if you get very special treatment. <laughs> You'll be told you're going to hell as a sinner, just like everybody else. Right. See? <laughs> Come on up in here, see? I get sick of these people. I mean, I am so tired of stupid. Yeah. I mean, just stupid, yeah. stupid, stupid people. Yeah. I'm sick of them, yeah. really. Some of this stuff is so stupid. You know, if you were like in another world, you'd be going, I can't believe that. You know, is that real? No, I can't. It's almost right. like that they think that there is another world. Right. See? Right. That they've created. And everybody's got to believe like they believe, right. see? I'm not believing none of that stuff, see? Because, I mean, you know, running around here talking about, well, you know, I'm black and all of that, you know, so I get special treatment. No, man, if you're black, all they're going to give you is a hand, a hand, a handout. Mm -hmm. That's all you're going to get, see? You've been fooled by the government for years and years and years and years, and the thing about it, you can't fool God, though. Right. Amen. See, cause right. you know, if you want to be pitiful and stupid, God will let you be like that. Yeah. If you want to be doggone dumb and, 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 and stupid, God will let you be that way too. Yeah. Because it is dumb and it is stupid to think because of your color, your race, that you got a special treatment with somebody mm -hmm. other than God. That's right. See, God does not accept people that, first of all, are sinners. Mm -hmm. you, you're not going to be, you, you're going to be a sinners and stuff. And so the thing is, is that is that uh, is that you're going to get punished for your sin just like everybody else, mm -hmm. see? 
So you need to wake up and stop being used as a tool by these people to think that you're special or whatever, and that doesn't happen all because of the fact that the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Thou, and even when you get saved, you're not special because right. everybody with God, all of his children are treated the same. Right. There's not one word in the Bible that says, well, this word here is for this group of my children or this word or his group, this group. No, 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 no. The same word for everybody. Right. See? Everybody gets the same word. Everybody has access to the same blessings if they are obedient and faithful to do what God commands them to do. And you are also available for all the doggone curses mm -hmm. and, and, and the damnations right. if you choose not to obey God. That's and stuff. Right. So we'll continue next week and we'll look at, you know, how the devil keeps unbelievers in the dark. Right. See? In the dark. And we talked about a little bit of it today. Deception being one of them. Mm -hmm. So until next week, God bless y'all. And God be God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There's only one God and one Savior. And his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. That name that's above every right. name. Mm -hmm. At the mention of the name Jesus, every knee mm -hmm. shall bow. And every tongue mm -hmm. shall confess that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is Lord mm -hmm. of all. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah.